George, the floor is yours. Take it away. Thank you, um, and I'm excited to be here. Online transactions in, in today's world requires a comprehensive approach to mitigating activities of cyber attackers. Uh, the emerging drive towards um, financial inclusion and uh, digitalization has seen the rise of many players um, within the retail payment ecosystem offering various services and products uh, via merchant sites and uh, mobile devices. As transactions on these platforms increase, there is the increasing need for um, companies and merchants to protect systems, customer funds, and uh, data from e scheming and cyber attacks. Um, so what are the ways in which these systems could be exploited and how can we protect um, the systems, uh, customer payments from uh, and, and data from being compromised? Um, some of the ways um, attackers are able to get into our system is by uh, intercepting data um, that is in motion, manipulating uh, software updates, exploiting weak passwords, uh, attacking data that is in transit, and uh, also network attacks. Um, yeah, these are the main um, forms in which these attacks come. So um, we'll try to look at each of these um, areas and see what are the possible solutions uh, that can be offered to mitigate this. So um, when the customer uses his card uh, during a transaction, the card enters into a complicated payment ecosystem where devices and applications of different levels of security are trusted to ensure that the payments reach the intended party. Um, the process begins with the card holder entering his details onto the, the site and um, starting from this merchant um, and ending at the payment gateway. The data is encrypted along these uh, multiple routes and throughout the process, um, it may briefly be exposed and leaving it to um, vulnerabilities and or vulnerable attacks. Um, further adding to this is uh, the fact that various elements of this ecosystem are owned by third party vendors, which you cannot directly control. So um, what is the solution um, to this? Um, the solution, one of the solutions is to employ point to point encryption, which uh, offers solution to this um, problem. With P2PE, as it is also known, payment card data is encrypted and as the details are entered into um, the merchant site. The information remains in its encrypted form as it moves through the transaction cycle and, and, and the payment gateway. The decryption keys are stored in an isolated hardware security model known as the HSM that leaves the for as it leaves the payment gateway so uh, this is the forms in which we are able to 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 protect the data um, as the as, as the transaction goes through its route data integrity controls are also put in place to ensure that uh, transaction information is not tempered with The second form, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, manipulating software uh, updates. One of the weakest points of retail payment ecosystem are unsecure sites. Attackers can scan networks and open remote access ports and carry out uh, brute force attacks on this system. And then posing as uh, legitimate software vendors um, these hackers send malicious code onto the website and get access to customer data. One way we can mitigate this uh, is to ensure that uh, we have we have adequate software updates on on our applications. Um, uh, 
due to the supply chain attack similar to what we have we had with um, solar solar winds um, third party risk assessment of vendors needs to be done um, whoever is supplying you with uh, software you need to assess them periodically to make sure that uh, your application is is, is secure also uh, another layer is to is to occasionally check for malware on your on your site and uh, ensure that all updates are, are, are updated as and when they should so um, the next factor we'll be looking at is the exploitation of weak passwords um, according to recent reports the use of stolen passwords and credentials is a threat to data um, hackers can the internet for systems which are generally protected with weak or default passwords. Similarly, once a hacker has access um, to a vendor provided passwords, he uses it on other sites um, where this vendor provides, um, provides services to. Once an attacker has a password, they simply access the system and install malware to collect and export um, customer information. So um, it is important that um, secure passwords are used in securing all, all your systems. Um, customers need to use, use uh, strong passwords. There are also a few different ways of of protecting devices and applications from from attacks um, first and foremost you make sure that vendor distributed passwords are unique and not used ac across multiple platforms second you consider implementing strong authentications to protect your customer information through control over who within your organization has access to certain types of information so um, here you make sure that uh, users, especially staff of organizations, only have access to um, the kind of data that they are required to see and not more than that. Now, your data lives in more, more, than <coughs> more places than ever before, from sensitive structured data living in databases, applications to unstructured data that should be easily accessible to those who need it. Um, hackers are always looking for ways for access. So while perimeter security is key, uh, place of a strong security strategy, data breaches are inevitable. So once a hacker breaks into the perimeter, your data is an easy target. So how you can protect this? The only way to fully protect your organization in the event of a breach is to encrypt um, all your data. Locate where your sensitive data structured or unstructured lives and implement strong data and encryption strategy. Additionally, protecting sensitive customer data is a key element of PCI DSS compliance and can even ensure that your customer is protected and you are PCI DSS um, compliant. Whether within your physical networks virtualized environments or in the cloud, encrypting your data is the best way to protect um, your customer information. And PCI DSS uh, ensures this. When we come to network attacks, um, hackers will stop at nothing to get their hands on your transaction data. So one of the tactics that hackers use is to monitor your networks and capture remote uh, and reroutes the transaction and change the transaction data as it moves along the, along the transaction path. Here again, ensuring that uh, there is integrity of your customer's data and, transac and transaction details is, is very essential. Organizations must ensure that, uh, must establish trust to make sure that the applications and transactions are protected. Public key infrastructures are also relied upon to secure broad range of applications, validating everything, including transactions and identities. 
So organizations need to harden their network devices, do integrity checks, um, and check on, on third parties transmitting data and processing their data to make sure that they meet all their security requirements. So um, PCI DSS uh, uh, provides uh, a couple of uh, criteria for which we uh, organizations need to meet to ensure that uh, customer data is protected. Retailers are subject to myriad of um, compliance requirements around how to handle the customer data. Compliance with the PCI DSS um, requirements um, requires that the, the protection of sensitive payment account data, such as um, the PAN, such as the CVVs, and such as the PIN. One of the key challenges merchants, banks, and payment processes face is the efficient and cost-effective manner in which this um, has to be done. With the current breach climates, that retailers and financial institutions and other players within the payment ecosystem uh, face. Being PCI DSS compliant is more, more, than, more, than important, uh, more than important to secure uh, customer transactions. For retailers and financial institutions alike, um, it is time for companies to start thinking about protecting customers' personal transaction data with strong encryption and multiple factor authentications. Companies need to focus on providing a secure solution for retail transactions or risk losing their customers to their competitors. So who are the key uh, players in this? We have retailers, we have hardware device manufacturers, we have software application providers, and um, financial institutions. Um, all these players who operate in the payment space must make sure that customer data and uh, as well as their systems are protected. Um, aside from, uh, aside from uh, what I've already mentioned, uh, strong passwords, uh, ensuring that your data is protected uh, through your network, hardening um, all your network devices, performing periodic checks, uh, malware checks, and vulnerability checks on your system, uh, making sure that your staff and all those who use the system only see the data that they are uh, allowed to see and, that, and nothing more than that. Great, George. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for that uh, detailed presentation. Um, I would like to see if there are any questions for George, we will be able to uh, pass them over. Uh, feel free to leave them on the chat box, we'll be able to read them over to George. Uh, but George, before the questions come through, I'd like to uh, understand uh, one thing or hear your perspective um, on the common mistakes, because we understand that security starts with you, you know, the safety of your own accounts and, and your systems at work, they start with you as the individual first. Um, what are the common mistakes uh, that you feel um, those with security information uh, about customer data and systems at their workplaces do to jeopardize the safety of all this information when it comes to their family members and friends uh, as far as that is concerned? We know of people who are married to, uh, you know, the person who has the passwords for the following information and all that. And, and and we, 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 you know, as couples, we share everything. There are no secrets in our marriage. And, and, and then we end up jeopardizing everybody else's security. How do we handle such kind of situations where in cases which this? Yeah, certainly um, social engineering is uh, an aspect that uh, we need to watch. Um, you cannot trust anyone these days. Uh, you need to ensure that everybody who is using the system is checked. We have levels of control and access controls that uh, you need to check. Um, you need to make sure that users only have um, access to what they are allowed to see. Yeah. So um, once you do these checks um, at various levels, at network level, like PCI DSS prescribes, uh, 
um, you need to have adequate network segmentations. You need to have physical security checks. You need to make sure that uh, people are working in an environment which is protected. Once you do all this, it becomes a deterrence to others. They know there are all the checks uh, in place. Um, so you prevent sharing of password between users, periodic um, changes of password, mandatory changes of passwords, such that uh, password that was used a couple of months ago is no longer usable um, within a certain period. Yeah, so th these are some of the checks that you need to do to make sure that uh, uh, people don't go rogue and take advantage of systems. Right. Uh, George, we also heard from a previous session today uh, that, um, you know, while we are having this session today, the hackers and those who are uh, threats to the safety and security of data are also organizing their own meetings to advance their threats. Um, uh, so how do we ensure that we are at par in terms of being ahead, uh, actually, of, of, of those who are planning to attack our systems? How do we get ahead of them? Yes. Um, so periodic um, checks on the system, um, checking for malware, upgrading your systems, making sure that your systems are current, um, upgrading anti um, antiviruses and, and, and anti-malware applications, making sure that they are always up to date, uh, will ensure that uh, whilst, whilst, whilst these attackers um, plan to attack our systems, we are also one step ahead of them. Right. Perfect. Thank you so much, George, for making time to spare time to actually share with us this very important uh, information. I'm sure uh, under our networking tab, you'll be able to network and answer even more questions uh, coming from the areas um, that you've just uh, touched on. Um, allow me to thank our sponsors, um, uh, uh, Africa.com, we have Intelligentio, we have iAfrica, um, Currency Cloud, it's credit, uh, Rage Tech Africa, uh, the Bankers Journal, uh, Uganda, uh, FinTech Energy, uh, which is the FinTech Association of Nigeria, uh, the FinTech Times. We may not have had enough time for you to hear from them, but there is a specific uh, booth uh, under the expo where you can be able to learn more uh, of the kind of solutions that uh, our sponsors can offer uh, to your particular organization. So please visit the expo booth uh, for the mentioned sponsors and you'll be able to network uh, as well, uh, get to learn more about them. I wanna thank the organizers for uh, the session for today. The, 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 the event continues tomorrow, but I wanna say thank you for making time to all our speakers, all the panelists, uh, everybody that presented or made a presentation today and those who will also be doing presentations tomorrow in other sessions. Uh, we want to say thank you in advance for making time and being a part uh, of this uh, event. I want to say thank you also to Vanessa. She's been very helpful coordinating behind the scenes to ensure that all of us um, are actually at par with the program. Big shout out to Vanessa and her team and to all our sponsors.